Hi, I'm John Hartman from Durango Silver, and in this video we're going to make a shank for the ring that we ring top that we just made in the previous videos. So, in, for ring shanks, I want to tell you right off: always make them larger than smaller, because when you go to size the ring for somebody who's the in in purchaser of the ring. It's way easier to size a ring down than it is up. When sizing a ring down, you just cut silver out of the ring shank and put the ring shank back together and solder it. Whereas if you need to make a ring shank larger, you got to cut and then you have to add silver and then you have two spots that you have to silver uh, solder the, the shank back together, which is fairly difficult. Um, uh, it, it's a lot more difficult than sizing it down. So, um, what you do here, you need a tool like this. Rio Grande makes them. This one was from Indian Jeweler Supply. But it shows here the ring shank and the bracelet shank sizes. And this is uh, this size for open shank rings, which would be a, 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 a open shank is uh, like a pronged ring that's open in the center and the ring shanks here uh, would be for a closed shank so uh, like a band okay so what I've done is I've taken I'm using today we're using 16 gauge sheet for this ring shank and I've already taken this shank here see and I have made this shank this whole sheet all the way across here is a size 10 and a half so I've got a, 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 a piece of sheet that'll make consistently ten and a half shank, in, ten and a half size ten and one half shanks. So I'm going to make it one quarter of an inch wide, okay? And we're going to go set the the uh, dividers for one and a quarter inches, and then at the same time we're going to make another type of a shank. This is six six gauge half round wire, six gauge half round wire. So we're going to make a shank out of six gauge and we're going to make a sheet shank. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the, uh, the metal one quarter inch wide. So we're going to take our dividers and we're going to set them at just a tad over a quarter inch. Okay, and then we're going to take our dividers and scribe a line in the sheet. I'm hoping you can see that. Okay, so, and then you can cut this with shears. In this case, I have a guillotine shear, and I'm going to cut it with this. And I'm gonna make sure I got a straight line here, which I do right now. Okay, so here's our shank, flat shank. And then what we're gonna do is come over here Okay, so now we're going to cut a piece of stock, uh, six gauge half round, for a half round wire shank. Okay, so we're going to make that a, a ten and a half as well, or ten and a half thereabouts. So we're taking another pair of flat cutting uh, wire cutters. And these are um, uh, real nice here, uh, and I'll try to get the number for you here sometime soon. Okay, so. Let's start here with this half round, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark the half round approximately, I already set these here a few minutes ago. This is approximately one third, one third, and a little bit more there. So let's just make it approximately into thirds. Okay, so we're going to take this, we're going to mark this in one third from that side and in one third from that side. So then I'm just going to mark it with the Sharpie on both sides, one third in. I'm going to do the same thing at this time for this one. These dividers are a must for a jeweler. And, I'd, and I think you should have a couple different sizes of them, a small pair and a medium pair. Okay, 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to flatten this. And so again, you need a steel block and as heavy as a block as you can. You need it would be neat to have some sort of an anvil and as heavy as an anvil as you can get. And a lot of people, if they if they have a nice workbench, they'll get a nice heavy duty vise. And so it has a lot of metal and it has an anvil on the vise that you can hammer stuff on, heavy stuff. And those were great. Those are great. In my case, I've hunted uh, most of my life. I hunted for an anvil like this. And this is an old timer. It's about a 250 pound, I think. Uh, something like that anyway. Uh, I think this was made in 1897. <laughs> So anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hammer this shank here flat approximately to that line. Okay, see that? Okay, now I'm going to do the other side. And just go ahead and take your time here and get it nice and wide. It's that real nice shape. Okay. And now I'm going to do this side a little bit wider to match that side. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to cut these ends straight. And I, uh, I, uh, when I was flattening them, I stretched that shank out farther. So I, I have plenty of room to cut these ends off. I won't lose any size in my shank. Oh, wrong. Okay, so. Now what we're going to do is we are going to mark these here uh, for our prongs. And I'm going to grab, I got my small dividers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this into three now. So there's, there's one, there's two, and then the center is just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to cut a little bit more. And I'm going to scribe a line there, scribe a line there. So there's our three prongs. Okay, do the same thing to the other side. Uh, one little trick. We're going to saw this here with the saw blade, with a, a uh, jeweler saw. So if you scribe these, scribe these, when you scribe them, scribe them as deep as you can get them so the saw blade will have a tendency to follow the line, follow your scribe line. Okay, so with this one here, okay, with this, for this shank here, we're also going to file this along here, so we got a pretty straight edge. Okay. All right. Okay, so now. Okay, so now uh, we got it filed, and now we're going to anneal it. So let's see here. Got to turn on the gas. Always turn your gas off after you're done soldering or using your torch. Always turn your gas off. It leaks. They all leak. All welders turn their gas off. Okay, so we're going to heat this, heat this thing up until it's a straw to a 
a dull orange color. Okay, I'm hoping that you can see this. See the metals turn now. It's, there we go. Okay. So you can you can quench this ahead of time. If you just let it set for like a, oh 20 30 seconds or something like that, you can go ahead and quench it in water and it's still soft, okay? Um, it, in my case, I have this cold stone here, granite here. I can cool it real down, down real, uh, real quick by just pressing it down hard on the granite, the cold granite. And then now it's safe to put in water, get the rest away. Okay, again, the reason why we quenched it is because it softened the silver. It'll make it a lot easier to um, work. So it'll make it a real lot easier to uh, saw this thing. Okay. All right, so now uh, dividers here. Okay, so we're basically gonna do the same thing. Do it in thirds minus a little bit. So we'll go, so we'll go one third one third, one third, and the center is real big, so let's just open it up just a little bit. Okay, that ought to be good. So we're going to start right here, and we're going to go down to the end. Start right there, go down to the end. Okay, start right here, go down to the end, down to the end. Okay, just grab it again. Get as deep as you can. Okay, so now we're going to use a two watt blade. Um, I like Hercules. Uh, or laser gold blades from Rio Grande. They push them. They're on the first page of your catalog for the saw blades. And you either use going to use a bench pin or something like this. This is a GRS setup that I'm, I, I'll do a video on tools later on. And what you're going to do, you're not going to saw like this in this case. You're going to saw a long uh, line for a long, long direction. So what you're going to do is saw more like this. So you go straight down the line and you're going to have a straight prong. If you saw up and down, you'll have a squiggly line. So when you get down to where the lines meet right here in the center, you're going to almost have that blade horizontal, but don't cut your finger now. Okay. There's one line, or one prong. Okay, get this where I can handle it. So see my saw lines met real nice in the middle. Okay, and now I'm going to come back and I'm, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to follow my lines just a little closer here to the point where they're about even. So this is right here right there okay so they're looking at the back side I'll bring that down so they're even okay now we're going to do the same thing to the other side okay now we're going to anneal the sheet shank we got the half brown wire shank all cut out, ready to bend right there.
Okay, there we go. Saw our uh, our uh, sheet shank, and um, I'm going to redefine these lines here with my dividers. saw these out again don't saw straight up and down just saw at an angle and don't saw your finger on the other end saw at an angle you can follow the line You can uh, go along here, saw, saw in almost level, and then and then bring your tilt your saw up a little bit, and hog a little bit of that metal out. Okay, and I am. Let's see here, going to redefine my stopping point here, so I know where to saw to. Because when we annealed it, it turned the metal dark. There we go, there's one. Okay, now this is where it really helps to have a, a uh, visor and ma with magnification. I can really see where that saw blade's going. I mean, there's no question in my mind that I'm following the line real well. have a sheet shank and a half round wire shank so what we're going to do next I'm going to show you how to bend these things and um, there's the old-fashioned way and I'm going to show you that first and that's with the ring mandrel and how you do that oh, okay oh uh, um, now is the time if you want to sign your shank inside your shank now is the time to do it but in this case, we signed this piece here, the tabletop, and so we don't need to sign the shank. So what you do here is, remember this is a size 10 and a half, that would be right there. I'm gonna start at the eight here, and I'm just gonna bend the ends round. Okay, real easy does it, huh? Pretty easy. Okay, now I'm going to take it to the 10 and I'm going to hammer the rest of the way around. Okay. Okay. So here it is so far. See? Now I'm going to bend a little farther. I'm going to come down here. This is going to 12, so I'm going to come down here below the 10. 
round it in a little bit more. Okay, so here we go. So there we go. Pretty much round. And now I'm going to take my pliers here. And these are the half round pliers. I'm going to grab this with one hand. I'm going to bend, just bend it. So they're just about even here. Just like that. Okay, like that. All right. Okay, so see, I see it's a little bit uh, off there as far as round. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to round it out a little bit more. And where I saw that it was kind of pear-shaped was up here, up top. Okay, so there we go. Okay, now look. Pretty darn round. Okay, so now take your round pliers here, half round pliers. Hold your ring shank, and if you, uh, if you need to, uh, like I have a couple different types of pliers, round, Here's a small pair of ha ha uh, half round and square. Just grab onto one side. Okay, and pull that prong apart. Nice and easy does it, okay? All right, do the other side. Now, if you find that these prongs are pulling, one's pulling farther than the other, all you would have to do is go down here and hold on from here. You can also hold both those prongs. Okay, then, so we're going to bring this one out here. Now I'm going to grab onto both these. I'll grab onto that center one too. Yep. Okay, so that one came out a little bit more than I wanted. So I'm just going to grab this with my hand and pull this out. Okay. So there we go, there's our three prong shank. Okay, now I see this one here is a little bit close here. Okay, there's a couple things I can do. I can take a knife, a bench knife, and I can, I can push this over the center prong, put my bench knife in there, and push that center prong over, center it. There we go, looking good. Okay, so just take just take a couple minutes here and make your prongs how, to suit your satisfaction. Get them where you think they're just right. Okay, and my little square pliers here. Okay, so just take your time and get them so you think they're just nice, just right. Okay, now remember this is handmade. Some people, some, there are people that make these machine made and they're a little bit more perfect, but the unique thing about a handmade shank is it's handmade. So if one of your prongs is a little wider than the, than the others, uh, not noticeable, of course, but if it's a little wider and the person's looking at their ring and they say, hey, that, shank, that one, one uh, prong is a little bit wider than that prong. Wow, this, this really is handmade. <laughs> okay, now for the other shank with your Dremel. Water got hot.
You can flatten them like that. Okay, you can use a big file and you can sit here and go like this. File them this way. Or if you got one of my handy dandy sanding machines, you can just flip the switch and do it like this. And now we're talking. That's the way I like to do it. Okay, so we got a shank here. We're ready to go. Okay, well, that's how to make a three prong shank, a simple three prong, prong shank. Um, and I hope you had a good time. Um, we sure enjoyed making this video for you. If you like this, please give us a thumbs up and like us. Okay, thanks a bunch.